Now, on page five, you have uh, a copy of the squares for analysis. This, I would suggest that before you write on this page, that you make about 10 photocopies, 10 or 15 photocopies, because you would want throughout the week to use this sheet for helping you to analyze specific emotional mechanisms. And you can see, uh, this is, you can, we'll put the stimulus in the small box uh, in the upper left-hand corner, our emotions in the small box in the lower left-hand corner, and then we'll try to fill that box on the right-hand side there, the programming, our beliefs, or what I believe which makes me feel that way when confronted with the stimulus, with that stimulus, with the various beliefs that we have. And in this way, we'll begin to get a handle on our emotional mechanisms. It's a very important help. And then in the center box on the left-hand side are reactions. Okay, so this uh, sheet will be very helpful in taking an emotional reaction and seeing it clearly in front of us. Now, you may have difficulty doing that at first. You may want to simply write w about what happened in a free way, just expressing whatever, whatever comes out and then take that and look at it and then try to fit that into this way of understanding what exactly is happening within me. What are my emotions exactly? What are my beliefs? And what exactly is bothering me? On the back side of that page, there's a more complicated method of doing this. <coughs> that is, we have the stimulus up above, and then uh, what I would suggest that you do is, and that second level where it says emotion one, emotion two, emotion three, four, and five, that you write here the various emotions that you have, fear, insecurity, anger, bitterness, injustice, revenge, whatever they may be. You may need another sheet. And then for every emotion that you write there, with that one stimulus that we have up above, you have to search to find the belief, which is the connecting link between that stimulus and these very emotions, various emotions, you see? And that's a more foolproof way of analysis because then I don't leave emotions without explaining them. I'm, I am forced to search for the specific belief which is creating that particular emotion. So the method is to write in the upper box the event. Then to write in the, on that third level the emotions, one in each box, and then search for the beliefs. There may be two beliefs or five beliefs. The same belief can create various emotions also. And also we can have many beliefs which are creating one emotion. These are not to be limited to one specific thing. And then below, the various reactions. So that you can understand this more easily, we, we have three examples. Turn to the next page to see the examples. In this example, our child brings home poor grades. Now, this, these examples, uh, unfortunately, were not created in the way that I asked you to work now. Here we wrote the beliefs and then we thought of the emotions. I prefer what I explained to you earlier, write one emotion in each box and try to find the beliefs. This is not a good example because it was done in a different way. Let's say that I believe that his success and happiness depends on his grades, or that he will be unhappy and in danger if he does not have good grades. This will create emotions of fear, insecurity, anxiety. Reaction could be effort to make the child study, usually with tension. If my belief is that he is to blame for his poor performance, and my unhappiness, or that he is not obeying me, not trying, 
that I may have emotions of resentment, bitterness, hurt, injustice, anger. I could reject the child, hurt his feelings, punish him. If I believe in box number three now, that I am totally responsible for my child's success and failure, and thus I am a failure as a parent, as a person, then the emotions that I feel are failure, self-rejection, shame, and guilt. Anger that the child is making me feel this way. That I need the child's success in order to feel well. It's not only that I want the child to be well, but this is a need. It's my need, and I'm angry that he's not allowing me to fulfill my need of feeling okay as a parent or as a person, because I need his success or his health or his happiness. This happens whenever we take responsibility for someone else's state. We can do this with a, with a spouse or with a parent. Once we take responsibility for someone else's happiness or health or success, and they are not able to create it, this creates within us often aggressive feelings towards that person because we cannot be at peace with ourselves because we are failures. We have failed in our role to create his happiness, his health, his success. If we fall into belief system number four, others will lose their respect for me. My self-worth is dependent on what others think of me and my child then again, I may feel self-rejection, shame, inferiority, self-doubt, anger. Reaction could be to release this negativity on the child, pressure the child, punish the child. If we have another belief system, however, that I and my child are souls in evolution, our self-worth is absolute and independent of our performance or others' opinion. My child has a problem, and I will help him, and he will succeed. Then the emotions could be inner peace, faith in self and child, compassion, understanding, love, and unity. Reaction could be to help the child discover the problem, inspect ourselves for necessary changes, and give emotional and practical support. So depending on our beliefs, we can have a wide variety of emotions which have to do with the child, with ourselves, and with others. Let's look at another example. 